Welcome everybody to Ink and Stone, the July gallery uh, show. And both Valerie, who is my daughter, and myself are sharing the design wall, but you're going to see a real variety of different kinds of art. So we'll start kind of down here at the end with a piece that um, I made this winter. I have done similar work in the past. This is just one of the ways I love working. Um, I like to dream about what's beneath the earth. And I've done a series of these where I think about the different types of soil and rocks and maybe some little water areas. Um, so then finding the right hand dyed fabrics is what really is the fun part. And I've used some commercial batiks but nothing with a chop or a design on it. I just wanted that hand painted sort of feeling and the feeling of color movement. And then once I got that one done, I thought, well, I want to do some more. <laughs> and so then I, um, I had a sketch I had done of some pillars and that Stories in Stone 2 is a sketch that I did. And it, it just fascinated me how they just barely touched here and there and stood so upright. And you can see I used the same palette of fabrics as I did in uh, Stories in Stone 1. And I forgot to tell you the price on these. Beneath the Earth is $9.50 and it is $21 by $48. And then Stories in Stone 2 is 450 and it's 22 and a half by 20 and a half and then stories in stone one is 20 by 20 and a half and it's 450 and what i did each time i worked on one of these i was using the similar palette but i was making different connections and I like working on several pieces that are similar at a time. I think they all maybe get more interesting because they've got these others that are up on the design wall at the same time. So it's really a way that I enjoy working. And then Ancient Pine is one of my favorite pieces. Um, this is a piece of hand dyed fabric that Judy Robinson probably did 20 years ago, and I've saved it through the years. And this is the linoleum block that I cut. It, it, it's a half of one, and then I flipped it over. And I put my hand to sleep cutting with this thing. Uh, when I was doing all the cutting, I got so intense and I had to back off for a little bit but it is uh, $1,025, it's 32 by 38 and a half. And most of you have seen my work in the past and you know I love having handwork, especially in the evenings, or I do handwork when we drive places if it's not too curvy of a road. But these two Creekside pieces are ones that I did and I've been fascinated by stones my whole life um, in my garden, I have raised flower beds that have a nice edge and they're covered in stones and some are stacked and um, I just really enjoy the stones and I like the subtle patterning that you see and line work and I try to capture that feeling. And then there's some more pieces here that I've all um, framed by using a canvas and pulling the fabric around the canvas and then mounting the art on top of that. And um, each one is a little bit different theme, um, but that's what I like to do, obviously. Um, and there's rocks on several of these, and I use a really uh, strong uh, textile glue that seems to hold them well in place. Um, so Surfside and Stan, Sand, which is the cream colored one, is 10 by 20 and it's 195. And then Creekside 3 with the rest, and that happens to be my Riverwalk fabric. 
uh, that came out this spring. And of course, I was just dying to finally use it. And I love putting it with the linens. I think the linens, the texture of the linens really work with that kind of uh, earthy, creaky, I shouldn't say creaky, that sounds like a door, but if you were walking along Whitechest Creek, it might feel like that. And that's what I'm thinking of in the middle of winter. <laughs> um, and that's 195. And then these two next ones um, are both ones, um, small pieces that I made when I was auditioning a fabric palette for a large quilt. And I wanted to see how the fabrics might play together. And, you know, instead of just laying them out, I find if I work with things, I physically cut them apart um, and sew them back together, add some stitching. There's hand stitching and machine stitching. Um, I do a lot of uh, French knots and running stitch. Those are my two I use the most. And those are each 150 and they're uh, 11 by 14. And this next piece is, for me, a really fun piece. I was doing ice dyeing in the winter, and you, I have a piece of cloth on the screen, and you put ice on that, and then as it melts, it drips through the screen, and I had a piece of fabric, just scrappy fabric underneath. And so that was the colors that I got, and I was really liking those colors and trying to pick um, fabrics to go with it. And all of a sudden, I saw those bird shapes. I thought, oh, I can't believe it. So I really focused on those bird shapes um, by doing hand stitching around them. And I call it a waiting. And I just think they're finally waiting, hoping spring is going to be on the way. And when I quilted it, I used the um, 12 weight thread which I love. You have to use a jean stitch needle, um, a 9014, uh, because the thread is heavier, but your stitching really shows. And I wanted this feeling of the, the leaves and the grasses and so on. And when I started doing my stitching, I started making little circles. Then I thought, oh, I can fill the circles in with thread. You know, I just got really carried away. And a lot of times that happens to me in the winter because I'm inside more and I love being in the studio. Um, these next two pieces, uh, oh, and a weighting is 925 and it's 26 and a half by 35, 34 and a half. Um, I always have some squares of fabric with single rocks on. That's when I started doing single rocks several years ago. And so then I started playing around, seeing if they might work together. And if I can get them to work together, then I go ahead and make a small composition. And um, I do quite a bit of hand stitching and I mount them on um, another piece of fabric. And you can see I've done more hand stitching. Um, the speaking in stone two is professionally framed. So it's a little bit more money. It's 18 by 18 and it's 300. And then speaking in stone is 12 by 24 and it's 275. Then um, this Surfside and Sand uh, was my first piece in this winter series when I was playing with fabrics. And I really liked this denim-like feel of the fabric behind it. It was feeling awfully boring to me. And a lot of times um, it, it just takes getting to the next step in a composition where it finally feels like it's working. Um, it's 10 by 20 and it's 195. Uh, Valerie and I um, called our project Ink and Stone and Paige, who is our um, uh, web person and IT person, was the one who helped us 
we're, we're always at a loss for, oh, what should we call it? But she said, thou works in ink, you work in stone. And I thought, well, that's true. So uh, one more thing that I um, did uh, this spring, I was teaching a class with the pattern, it's called briefcase tote. And this tote bag actually, uh, file folders will fit in here. And I've been making these for years. And when I would have to go to meetings and have file folders, I thought, well, I may as well have a nice bag. And I could still put my small purse in there too. But these first two bags, both I used indigo fabric that I had dyed. And I have put, um, you know, fabric on the back too. So um, I work on uh, fast diffuse, medium weight fast diffuse, which is a heavy interfacing. And so they're stiff and they keep their shape. And this one, I use my Riverwalk fabric and I loved making this one. You know, there's something about patterns in nature that just really makes me happy. And of course those colors make me very happy to do living in sisters. Um, now let's take a look at Miss Valerie's things. Um, she's been doing some amazing printing with, and she used her moth and her butterfly blocks that she's created. And Moonlit up here, you can see, is just a quiet kind of moonlit sort of piece. You know, it's that time of night where you might just see those wings um, flickering in the moonlight in the night sky. Um, and she has taken and mounted all of these on frames. And uh, that one is uh, 18 by 12 and it's 150. Okay, uh, wingspan is 12 by 48 and it's 575. And one of the things I really enjoyed about this is this feeling back here that she got to some, she cut some smaller blocks that she could use that just move the eye around in the space. And she's so good with geometric shapes as well as natural shapes. And you're really going to see that a lot in her work. And as she prints and the gold color goes on top of this grayish blue color, you get a funky gold in here, but each one is different because it's in a different place. So there's a lot to see in these pieces. You know, at first it just kind of hits you and then you get up close and you see a lot of the detail. Okay, this next piece that is more horizontal and it's 36 by 12, it's called Mystic and it is 430 and there's a lot more patterning in the back of that one compared to the one next door. Plus, it was printed on a calmer neutral. You know, it's um, the white is bright, where the cream is a little more calm. And, you know, with more of blocks used, it has more of a, um, a patterned feeling. Um, where you can see the depth um, where everything was layered. And talking about layering, um, the naturalist piece right below it, which is 20 by 20, is 375. And she's introduced mushrooms into this one. And she really will get on a theme and almost obsessive carving different blocks. And um, you know, this moth is a little bit different than some of the other moths. And, you know, you see the butterfly above. So there's a bit of everything in this. And I think what I find interesting, because I watched her do this block printing, she does not get her tape measure out and make sure that it's the same spaces in between, like in here and here and here. She eyeballs all of this and it's amazing to me. Uh, the symmetry that you feel, but it isn't sterile. 
Now these next two pieces are really fun because uh, she she saw me doing some ice dyeing and so then she said, Mom, I want to ice dye. So she um, did just the golds and you can see she used a couple different kinds of yellows and golds. And so when um, the dye, uh, well, the ice melts and the dye penetrates the fabric, there's a place here where there's a little pink that came out and there's a little bit of red here. So one of the dyes had little particles of red in it probably. This up here, you can see there's a touch of blue. And that came from something that was in the dye. <laughs> so that's what, you know, what's so magical about ice dyeing is that you have a bit of control where you put the colors, but you have no control over what's going to happen once they, the ice melts. And you don't know how they're gonna disperse themselves. Um, I think, you know, the butterfly and the moth, um, it's, uh, the top one is Odyssey, the butterfly, and then the bottom one, the moth, is the golden hour. They're each 12 by 18 and 150. Um, and when you get up close, you can just feel that velveteen texture. I mean, it's lovely. And you're gonna see some pillows she made out of these same fabrics. Okay, this next one, um, is called Moths and Mushrooms, and uh, it's 16 by 40, and it's 550. And this really quiet kind of nighttime, or dusk, dusky blue, was perfect to get that intensity that you do with the pinks and the oranges and the magentas. And, you know, if you hadn't had that quiet, calm background, you wouldn't feel the depth that you do um, where you see the layering of the uh, blocks. And, you know, this block by itself probably you wouldn't think was very exciting, but then when it's combined with this and this, it's just what you need. And so she, she does a lot of carving, not just the imagery of the you know, the moths and the butterflies or the, the mushrooms, but those textural kind of things. And I think that's added um, a really nice touch to her compositions. And of course, over the years as a mom, I've watched her grow and develop as an artist. And so it's really fun for me to see, okay, what she does next and next and next. And there keeps being a next. Okay, this yellow piece, it is called Meadow Dance, and that is a perfect title. Um, Carolyn, who used to work for us uh, when she got out of high school and was first married, um, managed our, our gift department, and she and Val became very good friends. And Carolyn is fabulous with coming up with names, so she really helped Val with these. Um, and the Meadow Dance is, um, or 30, if you couldn't tell if it's a five or a three. Um, and I, there's something about it that is so playful to me. So, you know, the word dance just seems to work. And also the way she's done the composition with the uh, mushrooms and things lined up along the bottom and the moths are just kind of emerging from that. So I think this is fun. And you can see the raw edges of the fabric uh, the little fringe, you know, some fabric will have a wonderful raw edge like that, especially the um, artisan cottons that we get uh, in the store. So this piece is really an interesting piece. And I would never have thought of putting those seam allowances on the outside, but it certainly adds. Okay, uh, Purple Haze is 20 by 24 and it's 400 and it has a quietness to it, especially when you look at what it's surrounded by. Um, and the white really, for me, works in this piece. Um, I just don't think anything else would have showed up enough. 
and there's something about it that it just seems to be magical. And when you look at the background on this one, it's very subtle. You know, there's a purple and a blue on that really dark eggplant. And it creates movement that your eye wants to kind of go around and see different things. Uh, and then the bit of yellow, I think, works nicely too. Okay, in the Mushroom Dream, this is 12 by 36 and it's 450. Um, again, she's used a really dark background. You know, it's a, a deep, deep indigo. And so in order to get the contrast, you really have to push um, your colors to lighter uh, values. I enjoy that funky green color in there. You know, sometimes I think, how does she come up with this? But I've watched her just fiddle around, mix her uh, inks, and uh, come up with something that just works. And she does, she works very intuitively. She doesn't have a giant plan before she starts. And I think when I watch people in the classroom in the design process, and I think about myself, when you can allow yourself to not have a final outcome before you start, but have a general idea of where you're going and then letting ideas present themselves. And I can guarantee you that if you have an open mind, ideas are going to present themselves. Some you may decide not to do, but for me, I don't think I would like all this quilting if I didn't have that design process. That's what I really love. Okay, these last two pieces, um, we have Midnight Solstice, it's 18 by 24, it's 375, and I would say this is probably one of Val's signature sort of palettes. She's done an awful lot with indigo and all the different shades of blue. And this was put on a dyed piece of indigo, so you can see where she used some stones for resist, where she takes and um, puts a stone in the cloth, rubber bands the bottom of it, and so where that rubber band is pulling the fabric together, when it goes in the dye pot, it doesn't dye. So you get some really interesting imagery. And then the bottom one is Midnight Moth. It's 20 by 16, and it's 275. And I kind of like how she didn't line them all up like so many of hers are all lined up. And these are, you know, one is taller, one's a little bit shorter. And I, I like this block in here too, that has more composition to it. A lot of the others just feel like fillers, but I think that really adds to the composition. And again, um, she's used the um, indigo fabric uh, and you can see where the rock resist was. And speaking of velveteen, look at these yummy, yummy pillows. <coughs> so you can see that yellow velveteen again. And then she did um, a combination of blues. And every piece is different. Some are a little darker, some are a little lighter. Okay. We're gonna take a close up look here I uh, told Val I would hand stitch all of the bottoms. <laughs> and so I have these at my house. And this is that just yummy, yummy velveteen. And then look at the backing she used. It's fabric um, she bought in Bali. And she likes to buy some of their textiles. And it's really nice too, nice and soft. And then the yellow ones have one of my favorite fabrics she ever designed on the back. I just love that yellow. And I remember when she did this, nobody in the industry was using yellow quite like she did. <laughs> and here you can see where there was a bit of red and a little bit of green that got in the dye somehow, and that's just how it is. So it makes every si single one of them different. And then uh, you're gonna think all Val does is 
is print. She also comes into the store and works quite a bit. But she printed um, a bunch of tea towels. So there's three different designs of tea towels, um, mushrooms again, and the moth. Well, and she went a little crazy uh, printing two different designs on t-shirts. There's the moth and the butterfly, but you'll see just looking at the shirt on the mannequin, it's a loose fit. It's soft, it's drapey, uh, very flattering on women. Um, some of the girls at the store have got them on already. Um, but they come in small, medium, large, extra large, and 2X. And she printed a whole bunch of them. So, so I hope you enjoyed our show. And I know we're going to see a, a lot of you in July for Quilters Affair and Quilt Show. And we're pretty excited. And let me tell you, you won't believe how much freight has showed up at the store in the last couple months. We are packed with lots and lots of wonderful things. So hope to see you soon or hear from you soon.